Today, Nexus connects us to the back office. Today, I'm talking to the back office staff here at Nexus Dental. Dr. John Peterson is my first guest, and he's going to be talking about the medical billing aspect, why it's so important to understand how the back office works, and how different it is from a traditional dental practice. That's why you need a partner like Nexus to help you through the transition and help you get set up in a way that you can get properly reimbursed, you can do your billing correctly, and you can make sure your patients are highly satisfied. having that relationship with a dental professional that knows how to speak in medical terms. I realize you guys are doctors, but there's a big difference between the medical profession and the dental profession, 100%. particularly when it comes in the billing and all sorts of the back of the house kind of things. Uh, I, as I mentioned to you, I have a friend who's a dentist that was like, man, I'm not getting into that. That's, that, that's too difficult from the billing side. We don't have the expertise and knowledge. Tell us a little bit about that. How does that process work? Because this is a dental, it's not a dental procedure, but it is right. a dental appliance. But technically, it's a medical device, right? Right. Well, so how does that work? Okay, it's a dental device to treat a medical problem, and the, the way I attacked it initially was that I wanted to be able to uh, speak intelligently with the MD. So I did a three-year program in sleep medicine, and we can bring that resource to, to anybody now. I'm, you know, I'm available to teach on the yeah. phone, whatever. You know, I'm. Yeah. It's, to get into this is not that hard, but to do it well, you need the education. Now, with medical billing, up until 2008, I had a, you know, a fee for service practice, 100%. And with, with the financial, you know, crash that we had then, I noticed that my, you know, we, pa patients weren't able to afford the care any longer. So then I reached out to uh, a big company. Long story short, I, I hooked up with a gentleman called Scott K, and he uh, he basically. Uh, made medical billing for the dental appliance uh, easy and, and predictable. Uh, and that's another thing that we bring to the table. That's a great point. Because if you don't have the right code, Forget let's about just be it. honest, the entire medical system is dependent upon codes. And if you can't speak in the right codes, you're, you got zero chance. Zero chance of anything. 100%. Happening. Uh, what are the results that you're seeing? Like how, what are the stories you're hearing back from the patients? Because healthcare is about outcomes right. in the I'm end, wondering. right? It's not about selling appliances. It's about the I, outcome for the patient. I, I've completely uh, isolated myself from the financial part of the practice. Mm -hmm. And the typical response we will get from a patient is that you've changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you see the improvement in their, their blood pressure. Some patients who are on di you know, medication for diabetes will get off that. Uh, and, and you see a, a, a great response generally. Now we don't, it's not a hundred percent. There's some patients for whom the CPAP is the only way to go, but I work closely with, uh, you know, board certified sleep physicians and, uh, and we do follow-up studies on every patient and we have thousands of follow-up studies showing efficacy. That's so amazing. It, it works. Well, and I do think that there are patients that you're right, that CPAP might be the only solution. And, and getting on a CPAP, you know, when, when I got on a CPAP, I lost a lot of weight right? <laughs> because I was finally sleeping and had the energy to do things where, where I didn't before, which actually resolved my sleep apnea problem right? You know, for the time being. So I think, I think you're right. There are, there are patients that potentially can progress through that process too. Um, so tell me a little bit about your role with Nexus and, and what your, you know, you as a resource here within Nexus, what, what does that look like when you're working with, let's talk more about the dental, you know, the dentists, is that a training and a, and a mentoring side? Is that what your role is? Absolutely. Uh, every, everything from, you know, the patient care on impression taking, uh, titration of the device and, and how to deal with the laboratory. We're, you know, I would like to um, set up relationships with quality laboratories hmm. to um, eliminate the problems that I had initially in the beginning you know, trying to find a quality lab. Uh, it's very important that you have that kind of a relationship. 
Yeah, that's great. And I think that's really what Nexus brings to the table is all that experience. You know, I mean, you, you're not going to get into this practice on your own uh, and, and do it well and understand how to navigate the medical systems and the doctors and all of the things that go along with that. Uh, but but using a company like Nexus and working with Nexus gives you that that resources. And that, you know, I don't know how many years experience if we look at just the executive team combined, but it's well over a, a century. You know, yeah. I mean, many of you have been in this business for 20 or 25 years, and that just gives you the ability to speak from experience and to, there's probably very few things you haven't seen, I would imagine at this point. I don't know. <laughs> you <laughs> well, never you know, know about that. You, you, don't, know, you don't know. That is true wisdom yeah, to actually yeah. be able to admit. I don't, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say it because you never know what comes across my desk. 15 I'm, minutes I'm, from I'm, now. I'm, I'm surprised every now and then still, Derek, I have to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, John, I hadn't thought about that, but there's got to be a sense of accomplishment when somebody comes into your office and they're in extreme pain and, and you perform a dental procedure on them and they, you relieve that pain. Uh, but, but most of your work is probably more, you know, it, it's more regular everyday kind of thing. Imagine if you're a dentist every day, you get to talk to your patients about their sleep and improve their lives. Not just that short-term pain, but that right. I've been tired for 10 years and didn't know why. I haven't been able to stay up. You know, my my life, you know, my, my career and my life have been put on pause because of my inability to sleep. That's pretty amazing. I mean, you, and, you, you get to play, uh, you get to play the hero. And you're not going to have that heart attack or stroke or the car accident that uh, is waiting out there for you if, if you fall asleep driving or, you know. Yeah, not that's amazing. Silly. John, thank you so much. This well, thank great. you, Derek. It was nice, great to nice meet you. Nice with you. All right, next up, I have Pat Adair. Pat is working in the operations and billing aspect here at Nexus and has extensive experience in setting up these systems and making sure they're optimized for your dental practice. Pat is involved with Nexus Dental, but he's not a dentist, right, Pat? <laughs> I mean, no, you got I'm good definitely teeth. not. A, uh, they're okay, and I'm definitely not a dentist. <laughs> don't don't come to me for your dental needs. But Pat, I wanted to talk with you more about the mission and vision of Nexus, why you're involved, and then I think particular, I'd like for us to talk about the billing aspect of this. Because if you're a dentist and you're listening to this show, I know what you're thinking. It's like, yeah, I'd love to get into something like that, but the billing part is just way beyond the scope of what my practice is. And it's not like you can even go hire a dental, uh, you know, somebody to work in the front office or back office that knows how to do medical billing because it's a right. completely and totally different thing. So Pat, sure. welcome. First, maybe tell us a little bit about how you got involved in uh, in Nexus and how your journey started in the, the dental industry without being a dentist. Sure, like um, a little bit of a convoluted story, but one of the founders, Brett Brocky, I've known him for over 30 years. We met in basic training in the Army. Um, wow. One of my best friends, you know, like a brother, the relationship goes that far and that deep. Um, we followed similar, we charted similar paths in our professional career after the Army. Always a sort of sales, client relations, customer relations, client services. I ran a large telemarketing company. Most recently, I worked for Monster.com, the recruiting company. I worked for them yeah. for eight years. So I have a, I, I got a lot of experience in a lot of different areas. I've kind of always been a jack of all trades guy. Um, during COVID, um, I parted ways with Monster, and this opportunity just kind of happened in front of me. Um, I knew Brett. I, obviously, I, I, Brett's a friend. We see each other and, and talk quite a bit. But he goes, hey, I think um, I've got a place for you. I think we could really use your set of skills. And it might be good having somebody outside uh, the, the <laughs> dental realm come in and give us a fresh set of eyes. Yeah. So um, I call myself the janitor sometimes. You know, the, I'm, Technically, I'm the director of operations, but um, I, I put on whatever hat's necessary and, and kind of do what's needed. Since we acquired the billing company, um, my job has been to help learn it. Um, come up with processes, protocols, and start scaling that nationally. We've added about 25 offices over the last year, so it's going well. It's uh, definitely been an exercise of drinking from the fire hose. Um, yeah, well, I, it, is it always is when you're pioneering anything new, right? I mean, sure. and I think that that is the fascinating thing. It's actually really interesting. The story is part of what we'll be telling with this show is, you know, I, I, I had sleep apnea for many years. I've been using a dental appliance 
so after I lost weight, I didn't really have it as you know anymore. So started using a dental appliance, but it doesn't seem like it's working. So I'm going through this process, and it's interesting. Even even our dental guy here in town in Phoenix, when I went to him and went up to the front counter, you know, and said, "Hey, here's my insurance card and everything," she's like, "Oh, we don't." We don't take any medical insurance. I'm like, yeah. actually, you do. And she's like, no, no, I'm, I've been here for 10 years. And I'm like, well, just take a copy of it. <laughs> you know, yep. just in, and, and then as I came out, she's like, I'm really sorry. I didn't realize, you know, she's like, because you just don't think that there's just not a connection between the two. So how do you overcome that? I mean, because a lot of what we do with Nexus is really about, it is medical insurance technically. So it's not your traditional dental experience. How does that look and feel and uh, how does it work inside the company? Um, and this is two and a half years again, once drinking from, uh, once again, drinking from the fire hose, learning about sleep apnea as it relates uh, uh, in, in, the, in the world of dentistry and learning about billing after the fact. Billing, it became heir apparent to me very quickly was the big stopping point. It was the big roadblock for a lot of these uh, yeah. guys who wanted to, a lot of these dentists who wanted to get into dental sleep treatment. Um, the the process of screening, treating, um, you know, taking impressions, all that, fairly clear cut. It can be learned. It's still, you know, something that is not as, it's amazingly not as prevalent and known and in, in, in common knowledge as you think it would be because it's such a good fit. Um, it's an oral appliance. It's a dentist. Um, the two go hand in hand. But quickly, very quickly into this startup, um, I, it was billing. Do you guys have billing? Do you have a billing option for us? Um, that was the stopping point. That was the stick in the mud. That was where things broke down in most of these practices. Yeah. And you found some unique ways to really get around that. And I think the, the, the great part is, is that you provide that support. So it's not just like, well, yeah, there's a way to do it and good luck figuring it out. I mean, Nexus is really there to help in that process of if you're a dentist and you want to bring this into your practice, Nexus isn't just helping provide you the tools. They're literally providing you the tools for the back of the house too. It's not just, you know, the work that you're doing in the mouth. It's the billing work because I want to get paid. <laughs> I think it's important yep. to get paid. And these are medical, you know, they're medical devices. So it's not like it's, um, you know, it's not something that people can buy really over the counter or, or have the ability to do. They really need to, to in, you know, include their insurance in that process. Absolutely. And it's, it's you know, there's, there's, there's many arms to this, but two very obvious ones that jump out to me. One, we needed to find someone, we needed to come up with a level of expertise. This is a very particular um, niche. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the insurance landscape is fraught with peril anyways. You know, dies must be added, T's must be crossed. Um, so we found a, a good company, um, someone to, to bring into the Nexus fold that had that level of expertise. Um, and at the same time, there's a, it doesn't exist in the industry until now, I think, with us. There's a level of transparency and customer service that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the feedback I get from current customers and folks that I talk to on a demo basis is, you know, we collect uh, all the documents that our billers say we need. We turn them in. And after that, it's like, you know, we're, we're in a dark room and we don't know what's happening. Will we get paid? Will we not get paid? Um, we're able to really add value in that area. Um, we have a predictable model. We have in-network agreements with many of the larger payers. We have the expertise and know-how to go out of network, um, which can be even uh, more difficult. Um, but again, you go back to the in-network options. This gives... Um, this opens up treatment to a much larger pool of patients, potentially, uh, for providers. Um, as we all know, many times going in-network with an in-network provider, um, it's a lot less out-of-pocket for the patient, which is absolutely critical to moving these cases forward. Yeah. And I think, you know, you've got the opportunity as a dentist to have these conversations that a medical doctor doesn't probably have as often as you might think uh, because you're in the mouth. Right. You Absolutely. Can, you actually, can you can see some of the indications that there's a problem? Uh, you know, I go to the doctor regular, rel relatively frequently, and you know, other than sticking out my tongue, 
there's not much, there, she's not crawling around inside of there and, and, and looking for, you know, the way that my jaw sits and all these yeah. kind of things are just not questions they're asking, but it is a question that's really easy to ask when somebody's in a dental chair. Hey, have you had issues with snoring or, or are you having trouble with sleeping? Because I'm seeing some indications here in your mouth that there might be a problem. Yep. We, we've taken that, that good fit. And like you said, at the beginning of this conversation, like you were, um, the, 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 the anecdote you shared, um, Hey, uh, here, here's my medical insurance card. I like to talk about sleep apnea. It's unbelievable that this in 2023, that this isn't common knowledge. Like the public isn't fully aware of this dental professionals, even, um, you know, they've, they've heard of sleep obviously by this time, but it's such a good fit. It's an oral appliance. The dentist works in the mouth. Us adding value in our billing program, being able to get dentists paid, get these providers paid, it really clears the lane in so many aspects. Um, sleep. It, it, yeah. Go ahead. Sleep, screening no, for sleep, know. treating sleep, um, doing the things that need to be documented during this process. These aren't things that are super murky. These are things that can be learned. Um, again. You come back to the elephant in the room, which is billing. Like, we've got all this. We've got it up to this point. Now, how do we get paid? Um, and most of these services out there are out of network only. Again, you eliminate a large portion of your patient pool because many times going out of network, um, it's much more out of pocket. You take it out of the realm of financial feasibility for a lot of these patients and people who need treatment don't get it because they frankly can't afford it. Pat, let's talk for, uh, let's talk for a minute about how that works when we engage with a new, when, when Nexus works with a new client. If a dentist that's listening to this reaches out and says, hey, I want to find out how this all works. What is that? So you, you talked about support, right? You know, that customer service sure. part. What does that support look like? Is that is, is there a training element to that? Is there an on-site element? Is it, is it, you know, how, how does it sort of work from the onboarding of a new, a new dentist into the Absolutely. System? I'll speak to billing first as a, okay. a singular well, layer. Left the top of their mind, right? Because right. you want to get paid. Uh, you don't want to just do this because you love your patients. I mean, we all, <laughs> that's one part, but let's be honest. You're, you want to enter into this because you want it to be a profitable endeavor and you want Absolutely. it not only just be to get you more sleep out, you know, get sleep study patients, but you, you want to attract new patients to your practice too. Absolutely. If you're an office that's experienced in treating sleep, um, and this, it, it's kind of funny, this conversation usually, not usually, oftentimes leads into another one. Um, we can have a very uh, casual conversation. I can go over what we offer. Um, where we uh, would have value for you. We'll talk about what major payers you're seeing in your area. I can mm -hmm. let you know historically um, how we perform with those payers. I can let you know some of the things that we might not be able to do for you. We can see if we're a good fit. It's important to us as a company, not just a billing entity. Nexus Bill is a part of obviously a much larger Nexus Dental Systems. Sure. Um, it's important that you're a good fit. We want you to be happy with us. We want to make sure that we can provide that value. So it starts with a conversation. It starts with a little sharing of information between yourself and my camp. And we go from there. I have a very customer centric, customer focused philosophy on how companies should run. That's one of the main, uh, one of the main areas uh, that uh, the industry overall, one of the main critiques I get is, there is no customer service. We don't know what's going on. Our claims are in a black hole. Very, very quickly, within weeks of starting this endeavor, I realized if we can change that, if we can do a 180 to uh, what folks have experienced previously, I said that's going to be a big differentiator for us. Not only do people want to get paid, they want to be able to see from alpha to omega that, that patient cycle. What's going on here from the verification of benefits till the time the claim is paid and you get an EOB, an estimate of benefits. Um, people are typically amazed. The customers I have that have used other um, resources in the past, yeah. it's a night and day difference as far as visibility is concerned. All right. One of the big things that you need when you're bringing in a new product or service into your practice is training. Stan Jones is an expert at this. He has been doing this for his entire career. 
I actually have worked in him with him inside uh, the dentist office that I had my device fitted in. Stan flew out here and worked directly with my dentist. He truly is very knowledgeable about every aspect of the dental practice. He's very comfortable and familiar in dental offices, and he can speak from experience about what works and what doesn't work. One of the things I was really impressed with with Stan was his ability to truly understand and assess the knowledge that the people had based upon their background and based upon the trends in the industry. Uh, let's be honest, most dentists attend a lot of trade shows. They go to a lot of conferences. And I loved the way that he communicated with my dentist by being able to say, hey, look, I bet you've been told this in the past. Let me explain to you why we here at Nexus believe that that's a little bit different. So he really spoke from a perspective of authority and was able to uh, work hand in hand with the dentist and the dental assistants in, uh, in, in, in getting me properly fitted which really translates over to being well-trained. Uh, and that's what Stan is so good at. So let's hear from Stan about his background, his understanding of dental sleep apnea and he, how he applies that knowledge and wisdom in the training aspect of the business. Today, I have Stan Jones, who has just explained to me, he is also Santa Claus. <laughs> not not just an expert in dental sleep medicine, but he is legitimately Santa. This is what Santa does the rest of the year. Stan, welcome. Uh, thanks. Good to be here. I love how you explained that, you know, th there's, there's, there's th the Santa Claus time doesn't uh, compete with the dental time because it's really the end of the oh, year when nobody's doing the training stuff. Anyways. <laughs> we always, we, we always put uh, our clients and, and um, dentists and people that are in need with, because uh, there's so many people out there that, yeah. that don't realize they have sleep apnea. And then the ones that do, we want to help them. You know, we Absolutely. want to empower people to help people, you know? Well, and let's chat about that because, you know, in some of these episodes, we talked really about, you know, the, the end user, the, the man or the woman or the child that's having trouble sleeping and uh, getting treatment for that. But your specialty really here at Nexus is focused on training that dental office on how to how to go through this procedure, what's the right sleep device that the person needs, the selection, all those kind of things. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your history, how you got into this, and let's talk a little bit about how this applies and what the work that you do with the dentists that are part of the Nexus group. Oh, man, let me give you a Reader's Digest version. All right. This, this could be long. <laughs> um, I, I actually... Um, Started working when I was a younger man in my early 20s uh, for a dentist that approached me and said, hey, um, what do you do when, you know, because I was, I, honest with you, I was, uh, I have been an ordained minister for over, uh, going on, gosh knows, for quite some time. I pastored churches for 27 years and I would always pastor some of the smaller churches and he would say, well, what are you doing when nobody's dying or nobody needs praying for yeah. or you're not preaching or you're not visiting people in the hospital? I said, well, I play a little bit of golf, you know, and yeah. everything. He said, well, why don't you come work for me a couple of days a week? And I said, can I do that? And he said, yeah. And I thought it was pretty cool. I got to put on those scrubs, you know. And um, so I look good in scrubs if you didn't know that. <laughs> and um, and so I would uh, clean the operatories and sterilize his equipment and everything was going pretty good, make a little part-time money there, you know. And then all of a sudden, uh, one day, one of the dental assistants was sick and didn't get called in, and the other one was pregnant, and her water actually broke in the dental practice, and I was over there mopping it up. He oh. looks at me, and I go, nope, nope, no, nope. I'm not sitting in that chair putting my hands in somebody's yeah. mouth. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I, he begged me, and I got over there, and I put my hand, put the gloves on and the mask, and I'm over there squirt water and sucking and handing him stuff, and I'm thinking, hey, I like this, you know, and that's how I became a dental assistant. But then not long after that, I, I started working pretty much full time for that dentist. And um, he asked me, did I have all my CEs? Because I became a, uh, I actually have an associate degree in dental assisting. And a okay. lot of time, a few people have that. It's mainly a certificate, but I actually have an associate degree. And um, and I said, no, I don't have all my CEs. So we ran to some seminar and we're sitting there waiting and they're talking about sleep and talking about sleep. And that's the first time I heard sleep and dental and medicine used in the same sentence. Mm. And we both looked at each other and said, you know what, we might have this. Well, there was no home sleep testing at that time. Mm. If there was, it was far and few in between. So I went to a sleep lab, had a test. He did too. We both found out we had sleep apnea. Um, my, my AHI was about 27. 
um, uh, episodes. And I think this was something like about, I don't know, 20 something. Well, being the lab tech I was, I was like, hey, um, let me take some impression because there was no scanning at that time. So um, we took and um, made impressions of his teeth and mine. And I took acrylic and orthodontic wire and everything. And I made our first appliances because it was only a couple of appliances on the market, maybe two or three or four on the market at that time. And, you know, the tap, which basically really was orthodontic, but, you know, we found it could work really well for that, too. Um, so I modeled it after that, made some titration. Next thing you know, uh, I lost like 30, 40 pounds. Oh, wow. Um, my, I had high blood pressure at an early age. It went away. Um, I was pre-diabetic. That went away. Um, so I was no longer on any prescriptions, had lost weight, was sleeping better. Um, my wife was just like, hey, you don't stop breathing in your sleep anymore. And I was like, wow. This kept, we stumbled onto something hmm. and, you know, we, we learned how to screen and it, and it was crude and we learned how a lot and how slip testing came along. So there's a lot. I've watched this whole thing evolve yeah. from a phrase to a concept to treatment to helping people. Um, so it's been a real rewarding journey and a real rewarding part of my life. And now I think right now people ask me, so where do you think you're at now in dental sleep medicine? I think I'm in my prime. I think nice. that now everything is starting to come together and we're really helping people and we're seeing more and more dentists do this. And it's just, I'm just glad to be a part of the dental sleep medicine community. Well, I just want to give a disclosure here. Folks, don't try this at home. Don't try to make your own. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Like that. <laughs> but yeah, I love the that. fact that you're, you know, you know, out in the garage, you're making your own, uh, making your own sleep apnea device. Well, that's I, only because I'm an a exaggeration. Lab Right. I know it's an exaggeration, <laughs> yeah. but I just think it's so funny. Like, you know, here you are out there, uh, uh, you know, making, making wooden dentures or something in the garage. But well, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. And, and it's it's interesting that you've uh, you know it's like the hair club for men you know not only do I own it but but I'm actually a client I, I think that's the great part about it too is you get to see the benefits uh, to yourself and to practice essentially on yourself. Um, well, you know that I think that helped me a lot because mm -hmm. what it did was is because the early there's a lot there's the mechanics behind an oral sleep appliance are really simple. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a push and there's a pull, yeah. and you know you can get a different type. But I believe by, by thinking about when the doctor looks at a patient and they look in their oral cavity that um, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, just this all you need is one appliance and that one appliance. That may be true in some aspects that a lot of times doctor, a, a dentist will have a go-to appliance. And right. I think that's good to do. But they also need to be open that when they're, exam they're looking at x-rays or looking yeah. at oral cap and they're looking at all these signs and symptoms that they're able to say, well, you know, I think I should go with this appliance or that appliance. Mm. And that's where I think it was one of my strengths that, but that was over time of, of just being there, being exposed to it and, and just trial and error. You know, I, I'm going to show an example here because I, I talk a lot about process and I talk a lot about data with a lot of the things that I do. And I always keep this little Galton board here on my desk that shows what standard deviation looks like and shows no matter how many times you turn this, the majority of things will fall into the middle but there's always those outliers. So it's okay to have a go-to appliance that you say, look, this works for 65, 70% of my customers, but you also have to be aware and have the expertise on your team or the extension of your team through Nexus to find that outlier and say, I'm not total, this is not working for them. What do I need to do? And instead of being an expert in all of those things, I think that's the great thing about your participation here is they can reach out to you and say, here's the case that I have going on. What would you do? And your approach might be completely differently from theirs just because you've done this for 30 years. You just have yeah, Well, you know, our company now is, 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 is growing at such a rate that we're now looking at, we're bringing, you know, I'm training other trainers. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing people under me and, and sharing my years of expertise and, 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 and knowledge and skill and, and we're expanding but I still like to keep my hands on everything to do with all of our clients yeah. because, um, you know, when a, when a dentist runs into a situation, you know, we ask them, you know, hey, let us sign, you know, HIPAA disclosure and all that and everything so that you can share those x-rays and the information with me and I can look at it with you and say, okay, see this doctor? Okay, this is the reason why I think we should go with this appliance or mm -hmm. this situation. And, and um, you know, every time you, we tell people right up front, you're going to have some bumps and scrapes along the way. If we can analyze 
what's going on, we can help coach you through this. And it's a challenge. But then once you go through that type of a patient situation, you're going to come out on the other end more knowledgeable and more skilled and empowered so that when you do see it again, you're like, hey, we got this. I've seen this. Yeah, that, that's real. Your, your scope of knowledge increases the more practice that you have in anything. And I think golf is a really good example, although it's probably the exact opposite for me. It seems the more I play, the worse I get. It's like I get lucky when I just go out like once every six months, you know, but when I go out frequently, it just keeps getting worse. worse. But uh, mm-hmm. I, this is so let's talk a little bit for a minute about what is what is the training and onboarding look like? Because let's assume, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming that most of the people listening to this are dentists that have some sort of interest in bringing a sleep practice on. And uh, what what does that training aspect look like? You mentioned bef- in the pre-interview, you know, the amount of travel that you tend to do this time of year. Is that you're going on site and you're working with them? How does how does this work yeah, from well, a nexus perspective? Well, you know, uh, COVID, uh, COVID had a uh, COVID was a challenge for everybody. It, it really was, you know. And we had to back up, and as a company, we had to take a look at how we were going to approach it, and and, you know, and basically stay alive. But at the same time. We were look. We were. I had planned on doing this, but 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 COVID caused us to do it, and that was that we created online modules. Now these online modules come in two different levels. One, I just want a basic knowledge of what you know sleep apnea is, dental sleep medicine is, and and just a basic overlay of how I might could begin to treat it in my practice. You know that's good. That's on the we call that the lower beginner level. But then what we really recommend is we have sixteen. Um, modules that give an overlay of how you would start this in your practice and how you would go. We recommend that they do that uh, as a team. Each team member involved does it. Um, and they see how that process and how our process that has is a process of trial and error that has said, hey, we made a mistake, so you don't have to make a mistake. And then they see it. What that does, that lays the foundation. So when I come in or one of our other trainers come in to a dental practice, we can say, okay, you, you you understand the flow. You understand all the pieces that need to be put in place. We make sure that their billing is in place. We make sure their sleep testing is in place. Um, everybody understands their function. And then I come in and spend two, three days um, there in that practice or one of our trainers. And we turn around and start with a patient coming in the front door, you know, hey, uh, they've come in, they're a new patient. New patient is the best way um, to, 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 to do this, of course. Yeah. But you may work from referrals. That's fine. You, you make connections with other doctors or use a referral system. But we start from coming in the front door. What does every team member do from the hygienist to the dentist to the front office, the office manager, the assistants, everybody? What do we do through that whole process of, hey, you know, you could have sleep apnea. Let's get tested. Uh, hey, you got it tested. Um, let's consult. Let's let's present this treatment. Let's see what your insurance will pay. Let's see what what's happening with this. Hey, let's get you signed up and all the things. We have a little bit of a of a different take on the clinical yeah. aspect of this. Used to be dentists used to do all this evaluation, all this work up front, and the person would go, "Nah, I'm not interested." Mm-hmm. How much chair time and money was wasted in that? We have a different. We we believe on bringing that in later, which is perfectly fine. And we have a unique process to the soap note. Um, unique process of measurements and that guarantees the patient to have a more better fitting appliance and the right appliance. Now, Mm -hmm. you know, the right patient and the right appliance equals success Mm -hmm. for the dentist and for the patient. All right. Next time on Nexus Connections, we're going to go deeper with Stan. I had a lot of interaction with Stan throughout my process. He came here to Arizona, spent some time with me and my dentist. And I wanted to do an episode really just featuring him and having him talk more about back office training and why it's so important. If you're a dentist and you're considering bringing in a sleep apnea practice, you really need an asset like Stan on the team that can help guide and direct you into how to service your customers in the most efficient way possible and make sure that you set up the back office so that the billing aspects and the communication with the Nexus billing team is seamless. All right, until next time, make sure you like and follow us here at Nexus Connects Us. In the human-